What's up guys, I'm Nick Schiffer, and on this episode, we're gonna be talking about a HERS rating and just what that is. What's it going on, Russ? Nick, how you doing? Good, how are you? Can you shut this down? How are we doing? Great. What are, what, are we, uh, what are we leaking? House came in 1,009 CFM. And that's throughout the whole house? Throughout all... the whole house. So we're probably somewhere under two? Or yeah, two, just under two. I gotta work out the final math, but I'd say that's pretty realistic. That's not bad. So you're here, Home Energy Raiders. You guys are putting together HERS rating. What is a HERS rating? A HERS rating, HERS stands for Home Energy Rating System. Okay. So a HERS rating is the industry standard for measuring a home's energy efficiency. And that's beyond the blower door, right? Exactly. We're taking a holistic approach at the house. We're looking at windows and doors, insulation, appliances, mechanical, lighting, basically everything that goes into the house that affects energy performance. So light, light usage, is it like the wattage? It's the wattage, yeah, exactly. The difference between an LED and an incandescent bulb, two completely different loads. So when I first got here, I saw you looking at the appliances. What's the reasoning behind that? So every appliance has got one of those yellow energy guide labels on it, and that tells us how many kilowatt hours per year that appliance is gonna use. So we wanna put that into our rating because that's gonna affect the energy usage of the house. So at the end of the day, to simplify it, are, are we looking at what this house is gonna require, you know, or how much energy this house is gonna require in all assets, and we're reporting that back to, you know, the municipality here that is looking for a rating? So yeah, so we're, what we're gonna be reporting to the municipality is a HERS score, which is used for code compliance. The energy usage is a little difficult to say this house is going to use this amount of energy. Everybody lives in a house differently. Course, your your on, thermostat set off, points are gonna right. be different than mine. Sure. Uh, if you've got six kids at home versus one person, laundry loads, dishwasher loads per week are completely different. So it's kind of a standardized across the board usage for some of those appliances, so we can measure one house against another. So we have a blower door test that we're doing, and we're doing the ACH air changes per hour throughout the whole house, and that's really based on air tightness and insulation values, right? Predominantly air tightness. Um, heat loss through a house, mostly through two ways. It's gonna transmit the heat energy through the assembly and that's what the insulation is gonna slow down. And then it's the air leaks through the house that that heated air or cooled air in the summer is gonna actually just escape. So we wanna see how leaky the house is. I think Nate uh, from Zone 6 actually said it really well on uh, one of the Modern Craftsman episodes is, it's like wearing a sweater without a windbreaker. You know, it's thermally warm, but the, the, once wind starts blowing, it's going right through and it's cold. Exactly. And it's the same thing here. If air can, esca if air can escape, heat can escape. Now, we're also going to be t testing the ductwork. Exactly. Yep. We're going to be looking at how leaky the actual ductwork is. In this particular house, it's all inside the thermal envelope, but we want to make sure that that air is getting delivered to where we want it to be delivered. Why is it important that it's inside the envelope? So if there is leakage outside the ductwork, Technically, that energy is gonna stay inside the area that you have set to be conditioned, the insulation volume. So, so here we did what we call a hot roof, so the, the entire roof is foam, and that equipment is within that space. If heat is escaping, it's really not being lost into cold air, where you know maybe if in Boston we deal with air handlers that are outside, ductwork is outside, if that was escaping, that would be a much bigger issue. Exactly, we, the air that's leaking out is staying within the thermal envelope, but we wanna make sure that that air gets delivered to where it's meant to be. Uh, if it's leaking a lot, you might have a room that stays cooler in the wintertime and is too hot in the summer because it doesn't get enough airflow. The system is designed to be a certain tightness and they, the airflow through that ductwork may not be sufficient if it's too leaky. So what are ways that we correct that? So there's a couple ways to do it. You can have the HVAC company pay a lot of attention as they're installing. That's sure. really the best way to do it. Um, duct seal, duct tape, making sure that their connections are really tight. Exactly, and having a good design of a system. Manual Ds are important. Manual J is important, which is the heating load for the house. And we talked about the manual J on, a, a, on one of our first episodes when we were engineering the, the comfort of the house. Yep, exactly, and most code requirements specify a manual J. Um, in an, a situation where you come into a house and it's at the end, there are some ways to seal the ductwork. Uh, Aero Seal, which is kind of a cousin to Aero Barrier, seals ductwork from the inside. That's kind of a 911, I'm finished my house, sure. but it's too leaky and I don't want to open everything up. Or in a situation where it might be an old system and they're trying to you know, improve the efficiency of it. Exactly, if you're salvaging old ductwork, you can seal it up with that product. So when does someone need a HERS rating? It varies. Sure. A lot of code requirements now in Massachusetts, any town that's a stretch code, 
for new construction requires a HERS rating. What's a stretch code? Stretch code is a voluntary energy code that towns and cities in Massachusetts can adopt, along with a few other things, to improve their energy efficiency. As a town. As a town. Right. And in exchange, the state gives them some extra funding. About 85% of the cities and towns in Massachusetts have the stretch code, which means in order to pull a permit for a new home in those towns and cities, you have to have paperwork from a HERS rater. So you're going in, you know, here is a, a unique situation where this originally started as a renovation turned into a new home. So we're actually doing this HERS rating at the very end of the job where normally you guys would be part of that process all the way throughout, right? Exactly. So we would give you paperwork to pull your permit based on the plans and specifications of what you're planning on doing with the home. Sure. Then we would come in pretty much as the ductwork is being finished, test that, make sure it complies. We'd also look at the insulation, document what's there, grade the insulation too. How well was it installed? Sure. Um, and then after we do that, we come back at the end right about now and we do our blower door test. We test the ventilation. We gather some other data about the mechanical systems, appliances, and things like that. We're talking in regards to the fresh air that we're pulling through the ERV, right? Exactly. We want to know how much air is coming through that ERV because we don't want to overventilate the house and we certainly don't want to underventilate the house. Sure. So if we can get it in that sweet spot, that's a great product. We talked about in the last episode regarding makeup air and keeping the house balanced. If you're exhausting 1200 CFM of you know, kitchen exhaust, you want to be bringing in 1200 CFM to keep the house balanced. Is that the same thing with the ERV if you're bringing in too much fresh air? Not quite the same balancing issue. Uh, you can ventilate the house with an exhaust only or an intake only. Where the ERV is both. It's with the ERV is both. And it's also exchanging temperature across those two air streams sure. without coming into contact. So there's multiple ways to meet the ventilation requirements set forth in the building code. Mm -hmm. ERVs and HRVs are the best because they do balance the air. You're not having a pressure differential and they filter the air. Right. There's a lot of other methods that we're just bringing in air unfiltered. We don't know what's in the air. We're not controlling it for temperature or humidity. You made a comment earlier uh, off camera and which was really interesting. I wish, I wish we hit it on our last episode is how an ERV and an HRV is different. And we talk about the technical side of it transfer, ERV can transfer humidity, but I never asked the question as to how. And you made, you, you made the reference that the filters are different. Sure, the core where the heat exchange happens on an HRV, which is only transferring the heat load, that core is more of a, a corrugated plastic material usually. In an ERV where- So it's impermeable. Exactly. Right. Where the ERV, where the moisture is being transferred, it's more of a paper core where that water can absorb into the paper and migrate to the other stream. With that being said, what's the negative side of overventilating? It's difficult to put a holistic approach on it. You're gonna use more energy. You're gonna uh, take out more heated air in the wintertime, more cooled air in the summertime. Um, there's some other parts of it. You really wanna to talk to your HVAC contractor sure. and find out what the requirements are for your house. Every house is gonna be a little different. So you find out what the requirements are for that house and design the system to meet those requirements. How are we doing for our HERS rating? It looks good. Everything that I've seen fits well within the tolerances where we need to be to comply with the energy code and probably be pretty significantly below that. That's great. In Massachusetts, the target is 55. Okay. Um, her score is like golf, lower is better. Sure. So below 55 is great. Um, above 55, not so great. Um, then we usually have to find some other way to get it below. Um, I know we talked off camera before about laundry being a pretty important part of the HERS score. Um, so we can add laundry machines if there aren't laundry machines in the house. And that can overcome the default setting that we have to use if there aren't. Because that default setting is assuming. It's assuming a pretty, it's assuming a pretty bad efficiency washer and dryer. Sure. And then if you have something more efficient, bringing that score down. Pretty much anything you can buy today is going to improve that score. So this is probably more opinionated, but based on, you know, doing these ratings kind of on a regular basis, where do you see construction falling right now? Are, you, are, are a lot of them being, you know, just under 55 or are we working towards a much lower score? So the trend has been to meet code and a lot of guys are meeting code without a problem. We are seeing a trend to start to skew below code, which is great because we want to be more efficient. So we below are code seeing number wise, number wise. Right. So we're seeing lower scores. Um, there's usually a segment of the building industry that's shooting for those really low scores. People in the 40s um, without solar, solar will also bring down the score. So yeah. in a case where a building might come in at 65 or 70 because of some condition that can't be overcome, there's always an option to add solar to bring that score down. 
it's interesting because you're bringing basically everything that makes this house function you know and rating it and then tallying that up and hoping for a low score yep and what we would do at the beginning is when we give you paperwork to send to the building department to pull your permit we've already modeled the house and come up with a set of worst case assumptions the blower door is just barely going to pass sure. the ductwork is just barely going to pass you have awful equipment in the house you're basically narrating like hey do this or better do this or better. And that way we're pretty confident that as long as you do that or better, you'll be you know, below that 55 where you wanna be. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is rebates because you know, as you become more energy efficient, there's rebates out there that allow you to kind of offset some of these costs. Absolutely. Um, Mass Save, which is a, a group of utility companies, offer what they call pay for savings. So the more energy efficient your house is in the new construction program, they have a special rebate where it's a curve and you can have your house anywhere along that curve and the more efficient it is, the more money they're gonna give you. Every state is gonna have different rebate programs. So we'd recommend you know, getting in touch with your local HERS rater or energy consultant. And as always guys, we appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for a future episode. Ross, where, where can they find you guys? So our company's Home Energy Raters, energycodehelp.com. Uh, you guys can reach out and we can answer questions if you have them. Uh, but this has been great. Thanks, awesome. Nick. Ross, thank you so much. As always, NS Builders on Instagram. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. See you next time.